Okay, let's start then, if you're ready. Let's, let's, let's read it. Let's read it. If you can. The Wing That Shakes the Barley by Catherine Tannen. Tannen. Oh. There's music in my heart all day. I hear it late and early. It comes from fields far away, the wind that shakes the barley. Above the uplands drenched in dew, the sky hangs soft and pearly. An emerald world is listening to the wind that shakes the barley. Above the bluest mountain crest, the lark is singing rarely. It rocks the singer into rest, the wind that shakes the barley. Oh, still for summers and for springs, it calls me late and early. Come home, come home, come home, it sings, the wind that shakes the barley. What do you have to say? Beautiful. Yeah, apart from that? Any impressions? Any ideas, observations? Wind. Okay. When I think of wind, mm -hmm. I might think of something that does not regularly contribute to beauty. Nothing. Uh, oh. on, uh, <coughs> when I think of windy weather, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. rain and maybe It doesn't snow. have to be raining. It doesn't have to be raining, but again... Okay, wind itself. Well, that's uh, that's uh, probably one of the images associated here, we, we have here. different sorts of wind. But here, we have wind, wind is which is more like storm, and we have wind more like breeze, and yes. we have wind. So there are wind. lots of winds, uh -huh. and uh, we probably mentioned that some time ago. Uh -huh. It also depends on where the wind com comes from. Yes. Very often that determines whether it's good wind or bad wind or something. Uh, so what is wind in here? How do? Uh, how is it characterized? How is it described? Uh, it's a specific wind. Uh, it's not any wind. It's, it's not just wind. any wind. It's uh, the wind that somehow is the poet's friend. Yeah, what kind of wind it sticks, is it? It sticks to the poet. Uh -huh. It knows something. Uh -huh. It shares some of the experiences uh -huh. with So the what poet. sort of wind is it? How is it described? Is it? Musical wind. No. How is it described? Plainly. How is it described? Wind that shakes the barley. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and as you read it, I'll, I guess the first question is, what? Uh, why would you talk about wind, and uh, then you say the wind that shakes the barley? So, uh, what is the overall feeling in the poem as you read it, as you finish reading it? How do you feel? Something crystal. Uh -huh. uh, barley. The barley in the poem immediately transports me, the reader, from uh -huh. a busy city uh -huh. into uh -huh. the British countryside. Uh -huh. I would okay. say maybe British because uh -huh. when I think in English. Because, because it's written in English and because barley is mentioned and that's probably something that uh -huh. is typically British, typically Do you English. know what barley is? Well, I'll, I try to imagine it. I'm not sure Do I'm... Do you know what barley is? I'm not sure I'm good at biology, so I never Why know. Why biologist? Because it's a, it's a plant. Yeah, what kind of plant? 
It's a plant that grows. Uh, what is it like? Well, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, well, you know. Uh, barley. What barley. do you make with barley? Food. Okay, maybe food. Uh, so why doesn't say the wind that shakes the wheat, the wind that shakes the rye? Why does it say the wind that shakes the barley? Barley, barley. Maybe it's the sound. B barley. Maybe barley is what you make beer from. Maybe that's related. Maybe. Maybe barley. Barley, barley. Barley, barley. Okay. So we'll look at it. There's music in my heart all day. I hear it late and early. It comes from fields afar away. The wind that shakes the barley. Anything? Oh, well, first of all, anything interesting about the poem as a whole? Anything unusual in its structure, rhyming, meaning, images? Well, it does rhyme. Uh -huh. Nothing unusual about that. But is it working? It's rhyming. Then tell it. Oh yes. Good for the next three minutes. Okay. So anything interesting unusual about the poem itself? Before we talk about meanings, images, something very obvious. Well, something just very as you read it first time. Uh, something very obvious is that just as we read it, we are picturing the landscape. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Not images, not meaning, but the poem itself, just as you read it. It doesn't sound like a poem, does yes. it sound like something else? Well, to me, to me it sounds more like a song, because you have the repeating line. And it sounds uh, uh, like a one of those Irish songs, you know it. Da di 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 da di 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 da 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 di 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 da da di 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 da 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 di di ba di da 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 di 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 da 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 di di ta di di da 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 di di da 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 di 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 da da. Yeah. If if you hear it as music, or there's music in my heart and it's singing, or then in the rhythm in the structure. You hear it as a uh, happy, quick song rather than a slow song. Maybe you hear it differently, I don't know. Maybe you hear it differently. So it's musical, it's about music, sound and wind. Ah, so wind is interesting. Wind is interesting. Maybe we should start there. So uh, we have different images of wind in culture. So like you said, it can be a destructive wind, the wind that steals princesses from their castles, gardens. It can be a wind that destroys the land. Or what else is wind? It's freedom. Could be freedom because it goes where it likes. Because you can't catch it. It's like breath. The breath is life. Changes. It changes and it's music and it's singing. Oh, there's music in my heart all day. So it's a very positive beginning. We, we just enter into the poem and immediately we have music and we have heart. A music of heart. So what kind of music is it? 
music of heart. Uh, something related to happiness? Yeah, probably. It's like my heart is singing. There's music in my heart all day. And it continues. Really, there's music in everybody's heart. Well, coming to think of that, it's your... The hard bit, the music which is always with you and to which uh, we pay little attention. Yeah, unless Usually. it changes. Unless it changes. So there's music in my heart all day. Also, immediately we have the narrator. My heart. There's this me behind it. And immediately uh, we see the uh, narrator's relation. Because if somebody speaks of music in their heart, what kind of uh, person are they? Poetic music. Mm -hmm. Happy, musical, open, because they can speak about their feelings. Cheerful, maybe. There's music in my heart all day. So again, day is light time. Day is night. Nice. I hear it late and early. So why not early and late, apart from arriving reasons? Why late and early? Only the day is over, and then uh, there's night that's late, the later part of the day or something. Uh -huh. uh, late and early. It uh -huh. doesn't stop. Uh -huh. uh, I'm active during the day, uh -huh. but music in my heart does not stop mm -hmm. after uh, daytime activities mm -hmm. are over, it's mm -hmm. still with me, it still mm -hmm. accompanies me mm -hmm. as I move into mm -hmm. the night, into darkness, into mm -hmm. again, into something yeah. that might be seen as unfriendly, mm -hmm. but again, wind operates both day and night, yeah. night and day. So what happens? Late and early. Late and early. It's where we come to. If you start with early, then you come to late, then you're left with this lateness. But if you start with late, which is the end, finish, then and early. Yeah. You come That's back. A new beginning. You come back to the light side, yeah. all day music happening. Yeah. There's always a new beginning. Mm -hmm. I hear it late and early. And again, uh, hear it early means I'm not asleep at 5 in the morning. I'm awoken to that song in my heart. I hear it late and early. And again, I'm not asleep when it's late. I'm awake, I'm aware of the song. Late, early, daytime, nighttime, all the time. Uh, the word here, uh -huh. is, is it important? Is it because the narrator uh -huh. listens uh -huh. to her ha heart, yeah. to her music, to uh -huh. herself? Uh -huh. She's capable of listening. To listening, to, she's capable of hearing uh -huh. her yes. own feelings. Uh -huh. Maybe it's maybe, feelings. Uh, so maybe it's the message that comes, the music the message, that comes, yeah, but the music of, uh, let's say, uh, the, the music spheres, of the spheres. Yeah. Which, uh, which is always around us, but uh, we don't listen to it, same as we don't listen to the music of heart or the music of breath. Yeah? Maybe. I hear it late and early. Again, what happens if, if you keep hearing a sound, you stop hearing it very quickly, our uh, perception, our mind adjusts to a continuous uh, sound and turns it into noise. It's like, ah, no new information. I don't have to listen to it. Here yeah, it doesn't true. happen. So if I hear it late and early, all day, all night, I keep hearing it, means it's really important. It's really strong and powerful. It's not just like, oh, another train going past my window, never noticed. It's not like, oh, some uh, machines buzzing at the factory where I'm working. I can't hear it anymore. Yes, it's something deep, something important. What is that music that we hear all the time? Maybe we don't want to hear it, maybe we want to hear it but we can't. But uh, the, the poet here 
uh, Catherine, uh, she can hear it. Uh, that's what she shares with us. So we can hear it too. We can uh, stop and listen and pay attention to it too. I hear it late and early. It's like inviting us to join her. Yeah. So there is a kind of music in our hearts uh, that never stops which is uh, sometimes quite hard to hear. It comes from fields far away. Now that's an interesting bit. Because grammatically it's a bit weird. Yeah. Grammatically I was, I was you feel like say something's that. missing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, as a typical English teacher, there's your red pen. And then the poet goes. So why do you leave it that way? One of the explanations. Uh -huh. uh, the teacher's explanation is, of course, uh -huh. you're a bad student. Yeah. You are careless. That's why you leave it the way it is. Uh -huh. uh, an alternative explanation might be you leave it deliberately. You know that it's uh -huh. a uh -huh. weird grammar, uh -huh. but you leave it anyway uh -huh. because. You, the reader yeah. will immediately notice it. Mm -hmm. He will stop, yeah. maybe stop physically, maybe stop in mm -hmm. his mind mm -hmm. and think about it. Yeah, so at he, the same he, time, he, does, he will not just skip over. Mm -hmm. At it. the same time, it's, it's uh, uh, something that you may miss without any harm to the meaning because it's obviously uh, comes yeah. from fields that are far away. Or which are far away. Yeah. So and we again, can miss uh, it. We, yeah. we can reconstruct it. We can reconstruct it. Or we can rephrase it. We can't. Well, there's the word away. We can also use the word afar. Uh -huh. They are afar. Uh -huh. They are away. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Should be fine. I have to see whether it works again. Yes, uh -huh. it does. Okay. It comes from fields of far away. There's like a, a gap here which we notice or maybe if we read it with our eyes uh, we uh, maybe we notice it maybe we don't even notice it because uh, when when you miss or repeat it's a little bit like uh, prepositions articles or uh, then uh, the uh, the mind doesn't really see it it reconstructs it the mind is lazy, it doesn't want to read all of it. It's like that, uh, a kind of uh, a file of uh, a film file where they uh, don't copy every frame, they only copy the differences between frames. So the file is smaller. So, uh, that, that's the kind of thing the mind does. It doesn't want to read all of it because it already knows what's there. Okay, so it comes from fields are far away, so that's an important bit. Even, even suppose somebody uh, typed the poem wrong in the first place, and it is all a mistake. Uh, still, still, it's an important bit because the music comes from fields. What kind of music can come from fields? There's wind, right? And there's barley. Mm -hmm. and we don't know yet. We don't know. We don't know yet. Well, uh, we might not know mm -hmm. unless we have. So read what the kind? Headline. What kind of music uh, may come from a field? Well, far away. Far away, field is mm -hmm. not usually covered by trees. So uh, when there's a movement happening, sort of something mm -hmm. about the wind. The wind is already here. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we don't know about wind. We don't know. There's no word apart from the title. Uh, we know. There's music in my heart all day. I hear it late and early. It okay. comes from fields are far okay. away. Okay. So what kind of music do we hear when she says it comes from fields are far away? Well, again, uh, imagery. Is it classical music? Is somebody playing the violin in a field? What kind of field is it? If it's filled with music. A field, 
filled with music. What kind of field is it? The hills are alive with the sound of music. The hills are alive with the sound of music. The fields are alive with the sound of music. So it's a music that can go into your heart and stay there. And what's a field as an image? A field is big and open. It's cultivated. Well, it doesn't have to be cultivated, really, but say field. Ah, we know fields in physics. So it's even more interesting. So suppose the fields that are far away are not really physical fields, but more like uh, fields of physics. Quantum field. And it's far away, so we have a distance. A field gives you space. The word field itself gives you a big space, gives you lots of air, because uh, like you noticed, it doesn't have any trees in it. Ooh, it's I open. Noticed that. Yeah, it's open. It gives you okay. a lot of space and air. Why and would far, I away, something? far away gives you even more space. So the field in itself is big and spacey and it's far away the distance. And if you bring in uh, the distance in your narrative, you create longing, tension. Or you are here and the music is there and there's a big space between you. So uh, what it wants to do is to reunite, reconnect, yeah. So in this, uh, simple words, it comes from fields far away. Again, it comes, it comes to me. It does all that way. But at the same time, if it comes to me, the music comes to me, it means that I, uh, my, my, my perception, my consciousness uh, comes there, makes the same way, uh, otherwise I, I can't hear it. It comes from fields, not one field, but fields, far away, and then the wind that shakes the barley. So the music in my heart, we already have a feeling about it, wind, we already feel what it's like, how it's big, it's strong, it's nice, it's good to us, because our heart responds to it, our attention responds to it, and it's strange, because far away fields mean something alien to us at the moment something different. So uh, the distance is not in is not measured in miles or yards or kilometers. Uh, the distance is measured in uh, sameness. If it's different, it's far. If it's the same as you, it's near. So uh, uh, that's the logic in um, let's say fairy word, poetry. Sound. Uh, really, it's not just a sound, it's, it is like a force. It takes shape, now it gets a name. It becomes a wind that shakes the barley. So why would you use these words? Shakes the barley, uh, is it how you usually define the wind? What, what sort of weather do you have today? Windy. Okay, what kind of wind? You know, wind that shakes the barley. That's not what we usually say, do we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So why oh, A. The wind. B. Shakes. C. The barley. Okay, wind, we talked a bit about it. So wind is uh, strange. Wind is like spirit, like force. Now why the wind that shakes the barley? Not rocks the barley, not touches the barley, not waves of the barley, not disturbs the barley, shakes the barley. And why barley? Well, I can't... Have you seen barley? Uh, I might have. I might have. It's a kind of yeah. a hairy. Yeah. yeah. So, um, let's start with barley then. Okay, let's start so with So, why barley. not wheat, not rye? Why barley? So, suppose, let's do it like uh, in mathematics. Okay. Let's work from the opposite. Suppose it says, uh, the wind that shakes the wheat. Would it be different? Uh, <clears throat> oh, this. So, um, <sighs> would it be different if it said wheat instead of barley? Isn't wheat associated with bread, bread making, yeah. bread of life? So wheat is light, is golden, white, wheat, it's, uh, let's say, more noble, I don't know, oh, in yes. a way, because you make white bread. Okay, if it says rye, the wind that shakes the rye, the woodwork, the wind that shakes the rye, why not? Rye is closer to barley. Yeah, it's close to the oh, what's the difference? Well, again, uh, bread is made of rye, but mm -hmm. then it's mm -hmm. not uh, rich people's bread, mm -hmm. usually. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also something alcoholic made of rye, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, well, you make alcoholic things out of anything. Uh. Me? No, yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah. Ah. Yeah, see? Mm -hmm. So why barley? Barley is like the, probably the simplest of all. It's like, um, like what? Uh, doesn't it remind us of just something like that? Ag uh, agricultural countryside life, peasants. Eating. Well, why why wouldn't you say wheat or rye for that matter? Would it be any different? It's a field and a field. Uh, it, you know, maybe because it's uh, more expensive. I mean, wheat is more expensive. Mm, maybe. Rye is maybe more expensive, and as a peasant as uh -huh. a man uh -huh. or a woman uh -huh. close to nature you probably don't eat wheat bread too often uh -huh. you only grow it and okay. not for your own so consumption. So barley? What do you make with barley? Maybe barley has this, a nice uh, common sound uh, down to earth wheat, 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 wheat uh, rye is a bit like royal, ray, maybe, but barley, it's, it's like, ah, you, me, anyone, yeah, barley is sort of a, maybe, kind of thing, maybe, maybe it's a sound, barley, it sounds a bit like swearing, doesn't it, oh, barley. To me, it sounds like something. There's old barley, there's barley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These sound associations mm -hmm. are basically irrelevant to anybody else. But mm -hmm. oh, we, we have this strong bar, yeah. bar, and then barley, bar. But then, uh, isn't the sound not very aggressive, barley? No, it's not aggressive. But yes. the first sound is strong, bar, 
then it goes off the barley goes rolling okay Phew. why shakes it depends on the options mm -hmm. as you said the narrator can say touches but then touches probably means a light touch mm -hmm. and barley or whatever it is mm -hmm. is not really affected by the touch mm -hmm. disturbs again one of the options uh, means basically shakes but in a very negative way mm -hmm. there's barley maybe all he just likes uh, she just likes shakespeare maybe yes maybe so why shakes the barley so shaking yeah shaking as you as you as you do it now mm -hmm. uh, is something that brings a man mm -hmm. awake mm -hmm. yeah so to shake something someone is a let's say personal maybe you shake something you express your emotion yeah and again shakespeare there's mm -hmm. this spear yeah like apple spear he shakes pierce yeah and the william in a fair tree well oh, anyway it's not about shakespeare it's Sha about yeah. barley but again uh, shaking mm -hmm. is uh, when a, a act of will Mm -hmm. So if there's a wind, mm -hmm. the wind has. So, its uh, do you own like word. when somebody shakes you? No, I don't. No, we, we don't really like it. When we shake, uh, when does it happen? We shake. Well, we do we cold. normally shake? No, we don't no. normally shake. So, we either we are cold or. We <coughs> are scared. Maybe <coughs> scared. Mm -hmm. Or we are. Uh, there's uh, that's some strong the, emotions. Yeah, strong emotions are usually associated with shaking. Yeah. Or uh, uh, could be illness. Uh, shaking because you're weak. But I, I don't think it's like yeah. But if you shake someone again, you're uh, showing the force. Like you say, usually we shake someone to wake uh, him up. So the wind that shakes the barley. So as you put the word into the poem, you bring all its meanings into it. And if you connect wind with shaking, then by that word you give a characterization, characteristic of the wind. So first of all, this wind is obviously alive. It's sinking, it's a force, it's a living force. Mm -hmm. It's shaking. It's, it can express its force and if we think of shaking as like oh just wake up be back to your senses then immediately we have an image we have an image yeah we're going to have an image for the next three minutes okay. we have an image of someone or something Passive, yeah. Not active, asleep, lying, or stupid, a sleeping mind. Then you shake it to bring it back to life. So that's the wind that is shaking the foundations. Is shaking means destroying, but at the same time uh, destroying the passive to bring back something new yeah and shaking shake is a is a strong word a strong idea so that's not simple wind obviously if it can go into your heart it's singing the music is very important cause who can sing who can sing Music is a spell. Music is a chant. 
music is poetry. Poetry is music. Okay, causal. Uh, before we had language, a human species, it is um, stipulated uh, that we had music for communication. Because uh, the part of brain that is responsible for music developed earlier than the part of brain that's uh, responsible for language. Oh, uh, roughly speaking. Okay. So the wind that shakes the barley. So what sort of a spell is it? What sort of a spell is it? Okay, turn it off. Well, it is good. It's worth waiting a minute or two. Okay, right, well, so that's the mystery, the mysterious force that can come from far away. And bring some tea. Bring some tea and some music. And that can shake you. Okay, can reveal something unthinkable. Some no reveal, thing. revive. Mm -hmm. Okay, above the uplands drenched through dew. The sky hangs soft and pearly, an emerald world is listening to the wind that shakes the barley. Again, early barley, pearly barley. It doesn't really rhyme. It sort of rhymes, but then barley stands a bit out. A little bit like a sore thumb, a tiny wee bit. <coughs> You're what? just harsh on Catherine. No, Brian's all right. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. If you do it, no, if you if you read, I hear it late and early, Winchex with barley. <coughs> barley <coughs> is a strong, it's a strong sound, strong word. Early, early is weaker. Rarely, early again. Yeah? So it means our attention is brought here because we sort of expect, expect a nice rhymey rhyme but what we get is barley yeah. so uh, it makes it stronger makes kind of a, a point okay. above the uplands drenching dew the sky hangs soft and pearly so what happens here? Uh. There was something that concentrated, concentrated on the narrator's heart, mm -hmm. her world, in the first mm -hmm. lines of mm -hmm. Sansa mm -hmm. 1. Then we were transported to something wider, mm -hmm. to the fields that are far away, yeah. and the space became much mm -hmm. more open and yeah. much bigger. Mm -hmm. Now it's the entire, well, uh, in line one, stanza two, line one, it's uplands. Mm -hmm. So we are going, the uplands. Yeah, we're going up mm -hmm. and we're going the uplands up. are already above. Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have above and uplands and the sky. Yeah, and we then we go to the sky. And we have this, again, big space. We had a big space of the fields. Yeah. Now we talk about the sky. the sky. And mm -hmm. as you know, sky is the limit. But it's not the limit here. Because the next two lines are going to, to expand Okay, we don't touch that yet. We look at this first we two lines. We don't shake it yet. We look at the first two lines because again they're interesting. So why uplands? Above the uplands, what's uplands? Well, uplands aren't they just sort of hills or mountains, something yeah, which, could be, could be. which geographically again, lies above valleys? Again, and you fields. say uplands, you think, ah, oh, that's high. Then you say above the uplands, that's even higher, of the sky. Yeah, you go uh, higher and higher. Then again, uh, upland, it's like, uh, again, you divide uh, the world. If you have uplands and you have lowland, yeah, where are we? Are we in the uplands or we are lowland? Lowland? We are lowland people. We are not highlanders. Mm -hmm. So 
here you have the idea of uplands, which are, again, like you say, not the limit, because they have the sky above, but still it makes us look up. A drench of dew. Now, where does our dew come in the story? Why do we need dew? Uh, maybe dew is, isn't it water of some sort? Yeah. Uh, isn't water okay, uh, dew. capable of, you know, uh, feeding the plants? Uh, Okay, but here yeah, it's not water. Water, which is for plants, is a bit different. It's dew. What's dew? Well, dew is something that uh, remains on I plants. I know what it is. What is dew? I'm not asking about uh, a dictionary entry. I'm asking you why do we have dew in here? What, what is it poetically? Why do we need to mention it at all? Morning. Okay, morning. You have dew in the morning. So you do something gentle. Gentle, passing, brilliant. Yeah. Like Reflecting little the diamonds. Sun. Yeah. Uh -huh. Emeralds. They have emeralds here. Uh -huh. Oh, it's later. Uh -huh. oh, so, trench of dew. Yeah. And maybe, maybe to have a bit of kind of water. Wetness, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Can uh, dredge should you like decorate it? Those, it's, it's gentle. I think number one the reason is that it's really gentle. Do you? Uh, what about the word dredge? Yeah, again. what about the word dredge? Yeah, again, not a dictionary mm -hmm. definition, mm -hmm. but rather mm -hmm. the images and mm -hmm. feelings mm -hmm. it arises. Is so it something say? gentle? That is trench. not gentle. That is not gentle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like trench, yeah. dried, drenched. And again, the range isn't it something Drink. that soldiers use mm -hmm. trench. in wartime? Trench. Take trench. That's. I, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. those, all those drenches where they hide from enemy's mm -hmm. fire. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So you introduce this a harsh sound and then you make it soft with dew. Uh -huh. So you introduce a hard image and then you make it soft. And then again, like you, you say, trenches might be connected here because that's how poetry works. If two words sound the same, they are connected. If two words sound similar, they are connected. So we'll keep that in mind because I suppose that, that is also important. You, you might um, not think about it when you read it. The uh, poet may not think about it when writing, but it is in there. It still comes out, because if you write that word and not some other word, it means you feel that the word is right. And why do you feel it's right? Mm, because the economy can tell you so. So uh, above the uplands, drench of dew. So again, uh, you come up above the uplands, but the dew is on the ground. You come up and down again. But it reflects. It reflects. The sun. But not, not necessarily. Not necessarily. So what we do is we look up above the uplands, and then we look down on the ground, which is wet, the dew. It's Above the uplands drench of dew, the sky hangs soft and pearly. So all is soft here, but then again pearly. Why pearly? Speaking of music, speaking of sounds, mm -hmm. the sound is different. Mm -hmm. It's not soft. Sort of pearly. Pearly is soft. Is it soft? Pearly. Pearly. Pearly is soft. So, uh, on one hand, the color is very gentle. Pearly, misty, glittering. But at the same time, if the sky is pearly, it means it doesn't really have a color yet. It's not blue, it's not dark. Pearly is this. Uh, 
kind of grey which is indefinite yet which is waiting which is like mist which is like in between again when do we have a soft pearly sky in the morning before sunrise so the dew just lies there it doesn't reflect the sun like you say because there's no sun yet it's before sunrise the sun uh, is somewhere else the sky is still pearly again pearly is very soft very gentle and we have this uh, idea of jewels dew Mm -hmm. The sky hangs soft and pearly. The sky is hanging. A hanging uh, again gives you uh, an image of hanging. Uh, if, if, if something is hanging, uh, you, you create a gravity. If you say hanging, you create gravity. Hanging means it wants to come down, but something is preventing it from it. And the sky is hanging, it wants to come down, yeah, it wants to reunite again. A heart wants to reunite with sound, the sky wants to reunite with dew, hanging, soft and curly. Again, again, it, it reflects our inner state. If I look at the sky and I see it's soft and pearly, it means that inside I'm soft and pearly, so I can see that I can feel it. It reflects my state, the poet's state. So it's how she feels, soft and pearly. An emerald world is listening to the wind that shakes the burly. Yes. So again, you have those pearls and dew. Dew is like little pearls. like. Pearl star dew, uh, tiny drops, all very gentle, and then barley. Yeah. So why an emerald world? Again, it's a beautiful emerald. It gives you color. It gives you a sense of beauty. What color is barley? What color is barley? Isn't it brownish or something? What uh, the uh, corn itself? Yeah. Oh, it's about the same as rye, I yeah. believe. Maybe a bit darker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So there are just hues here. There's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's we don't have bright no, colors. No bright colors. Uh, emerald might be a bright color, but then again, emerald is not just a color, it's a stone. The same as pearl is a, a kind of a stone, let's say, a gem. Yeah. Emerald world. So at the same time, uh, it's it's a crystal. It's not living in our usual understanding. If the world is emerald, and the world is crystal, means it's not changing, or it does change, but not apparently. Emerald world is beautiful. Well, it's like waiting, a bit artificial, yeah. emerald world. So, um, heart feels, heart produces fields, fields become uplands, growing, growing. Then we look at the sky, now we have the whole world, emerald world, green, nice color is listening to so I hear it late and early the world is listening to all is listening to that wind what is that wind so really really strange wind because all the world is listening to it but if it's a poem and you have the narrator then uh, all the world is uh, myself the narrator so her whole being not just her heart her whole being is listening to the wind that shakes the barley so wind is movement shaking is movement barley you can imagine moving in the wind too uh, as opposed to this more or less static image caught between states pearly sky gray sky 
not grey, thoroughly beautifully grey an emerald world again stone crystal beautiful but still stone waiting listening to listening is a more static so listening means you're waiting you're paying attention you're not acting you do the act of listening mm -hmm. yeah I hear it late and early it's like oh okay it just comes into my ear I'm listening to is one step yeah, it's one, one step high. Uh -huh. Well, let's... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, here we are discussing poetry. Somebody can't read this eye on the door. Saying, so please close it. So, an emerald world is listening to the wind that shakes the barley. That wind is bigger than all that, that is there called. It's so important that the whole world is listening to it. Uh, the message is the most important message in your whole life. The wind that shakes the barley. The barley opposite to you, the sky is off the fairly, and I'm rewarded listening to the wind that shakes the barley. Above, oh, look, half the poem, phew, two stanzas, phew, just took us an hour, phew. Above the bluest mountain crest, the lark is singing rarely. It rocks the singer into rest, the wind that shakes the barley. So uh, maybe, maybe, since it's, uh, uh, we have the narrator, there's music in my heart all day. And it's the wind that shakes the barley. What we can think about, what can we imagine? Uh, when is our heart singing? Ah, maybe she's in love. Maybe she's in love, so her heart is uh, singing, and uh, uh, the boy is working in the field and singing, and she can hear him. Could that be? So uh, then uh, the boy is like the wind that shakes the barley. He works in the field, he shakes the barley, he's singing, and makes her heart sing too. Ah, maybe it's all about love. Is it? Is it? Could be. Could be. Above the bluest mountain crest, the lark is singing rarely. It chokes the singer into rest. The wind that shakes the barley. Now here is something interesting. In case, it, uh, let's say, the hints grow more thick. Above the bluest mountain crest. So again, it keeps growing up fields, flat upland, like hills. Now, mountain crest. You can see how it rises. And again, we start with above. We go above again and again. Now we have color blue. So we had pearly. We had green emerald, now we have the bluest crest, blue mountains. Have you seen blue mountains? Have you seen blue mountains? Have I seen mountains? Yeah, you had. Okay, so the mountains do look blue, especially in Scotland. Ah. The bluest mountain crest. So now we have the crest. Why do we need, not just above the bluest mountain, above the bluest mountain crest. So the signal goes stronger. A field, hill, mountain, uh, harder, stronger. A field is all wavy. Way. Well then uh, a hill, upland, is more solid because it's earth. A mountain is rock. It grows and solidifies at the same time and gets some color again. You see how it, it she drags it or it drags itself from nothingness into uh, the image. So first you just have flat fill, then you start having bits of color, more color and it's all growing above the bluest mountain crest. So why do we need the crest? 
Why do we have the crest? Where do we have crests? What's a crest? Okay, crest is something sharp, again strong, uh, let's say a male, because we have crest uh, with knights, knights have their crests. A blue is mountain crest, so we have uh, different crests, we choose the bluest. Why the bluest? Why blue? We start reading the poem. Uh, if you read it one time, you say, ah, it's a nice light poem. It gives you uh, a breath of wind, literally, a breath of air. It gives you all that space. It's all very positive. It's very light. It's very nice. It has beautiful images. You look more closely, and it's not what it seems at the first time. Yeah. So, and here we have more and more hints. Now we have the bluest mountain crest. Why bluest? What's blue? Sky is blue. Okay, the sky is pearly. When do we use blue? What what uh, do we know of blue in culture? What's blue in culture? What are uh, I don't know characters, ideas connected with blue? Bluebird of happiness. Yeah. yeah. Blue is a uh, like color of. Is it the color of the sea? No. Sea isn't blue. Navy. Dark blue. Dark blue. No, blue in culture. So it's uh, it's a calm color. Yeah, it's it's not aggressive. It's calm. And blue means coming from uh, the other world. Bluebird of happiness, that's where it all started. Uh, he was the first one to use it as a symbol uh, publicly. Uh, since then, we had it everywhere. But even before that, like, even before that story, we had blue as uh, something, let's say, supernatural, not belonging to that place. If you look at these images of uh, gods, genies, demons, very often they are blue. Yeah? Okay. They are. So, uh, blue means... Do bodies turn blue after death? Do they just turn black? I don't know. I've never seen one. Uh, yeah. Yeah? So the blue is mountain crest, but blue that strong color. Because if you say a blue sky, then it's like common, it's normal. If you say blue mountain, then mountains are blue. But do you often think think of mountains as of being blue? And is being the bluest what you uh, choose among mountains? Why would it be a special highest, symbol? The highest mountain hmm. that attracts our attention. Yeah, well here it's not highest, it's, it's bluest. It's bluest. Which means closest to the other side. The bluest mountain crest. The lark is singing rarely. Oh, that's interesting. Now we have something more living. The lark. One lark. A single lark. Okay, why lark? We have lots of lark poetry. So why a lark? Do you know a lark bird? Well, uh, biology is not my strong point, if there are any strong points. I, I know that it's a bird. Okay, it's a small bird, it's a small bird yes. singing bird, but, but, yeah. a cheerful bird, always in the sky, flying cheerfully. Yeah. Uh, 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 I don't know, not unlike a swallow in um, in that, uh, but it's singing. The lark is a uh, small bird. It's not bright, uh, but it's uh, bright in its character. So uh, uh, you come uh, across larks uh, very often. 
called the happy free bird. So when you say lark, what you say is freedom. Or you can say it's a soul. A soul that can't be contained. A spirit again. The lark is singing rarely. So uh, a bird song, bird song. Birds are interesting because, again, in culture, uh, who are birds? What are birds? They uh, guide you to the other side because they can fly. So they take you to uh, where you can't go yourself. They can cross the border. Um, in, in that context here, I guess it's working. The lark is singing rarely. Why rarely? What does it mean, rarely? With rare beauty. Yeah, mm -hmm. with rare beauty. It rocks the singer into rest. So what happens here? The wind that shakes the barley. Who is the singer and uh, what rocks the singer into rest? Is the singer the lark? Is the singer the wind? Is the singer uh, somebody else? What is it uh, that rocks? Is it uh, the lark song? Is it wind? Is it something else? Uh, can't, we, can't we interpret it two ways? Mm -hmm. It rocks the singer into rest. Something. Mm -hmm. The singer into rest. Uh, the wind that shakes the mouth. Uh, you begin when you read it. It rocks. The lark is singing rare. It rocks the singer into rest. You think it's the lark that rocks mm -hmm. the singer into rest. Yeah. Then you come to the repeating line. The wind that shakes the mouth. And then you decide that it's the wind that mm -hmm. rocks the singer, mm -hmm. and the lark mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. singer. It rocks the lark into yes. rest. But then again, looking at it for the third time, yeah. you can see that both interpretations are mm -hmm. really possible. Yeah. It rocks the singer into rest. Maybe the singer is in the wind and rocks the, the lark, bar. and the wind uh, rock it into rest. So it's it's very unusual turn, very interesting. Uh, what happens here? Again, we have music, we have sound, we have the singer, the song, singing, singer. But then it rocks the singer into rest. The wind is shakes the barn. Yeah, rocking, shaking, uh, somewhere close. Uh, the singer, a uh, singing heart. A singing lark, singing spirit. So as long as you sing, you're alive. As long as you're alive, you sing. Your life is your song. Your uh, soul is free like the lark and it's happy like a lark. A singing the happy song of life. So what is it that rocks the singer into rest? Yeah. So interesting, interesting. You start reading the poem, it's nice and light. Uh, you read it again, you realize it's all about death again. Oh, well, basically, basically, if, if you look at poetry, if you look at songs, if you look at uh, traditions, uh, there's only uh, two subjects, two and a half. It's birth, marriage, and death and marriage and death are the same so basically it's birth and death and then birth and death are connected obviously so they are the same too why marriage and death are the same ah that's an interesting question but as you look into again different traditions and you see about oh let's say the rituals the songs uh, that are connected with marriage they reflect those connected with death so uh, the idea is that the person, uh, well, obviously any connection, any metaphor uh, works uh, two ways. So on one hand, if the person gets married, it means 
he she dies or uh, from the previous life and gets into a new life as a wife or a husband which is completely different uh, starting a new family getting all this new uh, responsibility new life a new name in K or very often yeah and at the same time a dying is like marriage you marry to the uh, next world you still have that idea in like uh, Christianity where a soul is a bride yeah so it works two ways Whew. and here again you may think ah oh, maybe it's a love song maybe she's just waiting for her boy to come from the field or maybe maybe it's a death Maybe it's uh, the music of death, because who says that death has to be a horrible? It's a horrible as long as you're afraid of it. I, uh, I hear it late and early. It comes from fields of far away, the wind that shakes the barley. So, if, which uh, may remind us of this idea of death as a reaper working in the field. Here it's not a ripping, it's just shaking, kind of preparing the ground, the field. It's a constant uh, re reminder. Yeah. And again, uh, the sky hangs soft and pearly. Uh, pearly. Again, we see this uh, transgression because uh, this pearly veil uh, can lead you to the other side. the uplands again the other world upland underworld upland or well, again if you look at fairy tales they go either way either they go underground to find the other world or they go up somewhere to find it above the bluest mountain crest the lark is sinking rarely it chokes the singing to rest so that lark that is singing is rocked into rest. Again, it's funny because you have mountain and rock, and rock and shake. Uh, so the rock is that really uh, cornerstone rock, which uh, connects two ideas of this mountain. Maybe it's life. Maybe it's your life that grows from field to mountain. Maybe I don't know. But again, uh, it's mm -hmm. as cheerful people like you say it's it can be a death symbol because uh -huh. uh, death a tomb is usually covered by a stone uh -huh. a rock uh -huh. or something very often it's rock uh -huh. it's literally yeah. it's literally yeah. rock yeah good rock the singer into rest so what it says here is that uh, your life is a song but your death is a song too the wind that shakes the barley, the wind that shakes the barley, do do do. About the blue is something crest, the lark is singing rarely, rock the singer into rest, the wind that shakes the barley. Ooh. Ah, now it's getting interesting. Now it's getting. Because the wind, again, uh, can be a symbol of death because it can take you somewhere. Can blow, it just, it's just blowing, it's just blowing. The wind that shakes the barley. Because uh, here, if, if we suppose that wind is like death, uh, then death is very interesting, very beautiful. It's musical, it's friendly, it's very active, it's very strong. It requires interaction. And as she can hear it, she can feel this connection, this music in her heart, and she's not afraid to listen to it. Well, uh, <coughs> that's probably what you might call Christian attitudes uh -huh. to death. You are not inviting death, but uh -huh. still you see death as birth, rebirth, being uh -huh. born to the uh -huh. other life. You don't see it. You don't see death as something to avoid, something mm -hmm. to avoid thinking of, mm -hmm. but then 
your life and your life song in this world leads you to the other world and more songs and life. Again, uh, this is uh, in opposition to the idea that you only live here uh -huh. and you have this limited time to enjoy life and then you should Mm -hmm. You should. You mm -hmm. shouldn't invite death. Uh, uh, rather, you should mm -hmm. uh, have as many joys as possible. And it's also in position to the uh, idea uh, that uh, death is much more welcome than life, because not because it's an invitation to the other world, but it's because it puts an end to all those sufferings which is basically here. a ridiculous idea well, well uh, so both of these ideas mm -hmm. are not if we read the poem as mm -hmm. we're reading it now yep. both of these ideas are not the narrator's ideas mm -hmm. well, it's her set, idea her idea is but it's natural singing, it's natural and it's as singing, the song as singing does continue singing. does continue mm -hmm. and so the breath does mm -hmm. not leave us as we die it's still continuing in some sort of way after we so, die. yeah what, what happens here oh uh, that uh, strange line it rocks the singer into rest which is related to both a lark and wind as we have lark singer wind so the lark turns into wind basically rocks are sinking to rest the wind so we have the rest and then the wind is rising again okay oh, above the blues mountain crest the lark is singing rarely trucks the singer into rest the wind that shakes the barley and uh, now as we read the last uh, stanza it's like ah ah oh dear Oh, still for summers and for springs, it calls me late and early. Come home, come home, come home, it sings. The wind that shakes the barley. So again, we may say, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a song, of, maybe it's not about death, maybe she just went uh, to, to live somewhere else, uh, moved from her home place, and she's just remembering fields at home just literally yeah, and it's but then we can always think yeah. mm -hmm. so it, it's possible that she just remember but um well why go into all that because she doesn't really uh, point in the direction anywhere else still for summers and for springs does it want to have a summer or spring no, not yet. Mm -hmm. So what happens here? Still for summers and for springs. So first we are talking, we, we come back to the first stanza. Yeah? We come back, but uh, it's changing. First we had all day, late and early, like uh, day and night, morning, evening, which is uh, a short period, a short cycle of uh, one day. And now we have summers and springs. But again, the Mm -hmm. The usual order for mm -hmm. us today is winter, maybe spring, mm -hmm. but when you like summer, autumn, winter again. Uh, the order is reversed. Mm -hmm. Same as late summer, and early. Same, same, yeah. It's late and early, summer and spring. Mm -hmm. Something which gives birth comes after mm -hmm. uh, yes. summer. And yeah. we don't have any uh, uh, so-called uh, negative seasons, cold seasons. We don't have autumn, we don't have winter. We have the so-called uh, positive seasons. Yeah. Obviously winter can be beautiful and autumn can be beautiful, but again, traditionally we don't like it. Uh, we like summer, we like spring, when everything's flowering, everything's nice and warm, everything's alive. So, for summers and for springs, um, basically means for years. Well, now we talk about seasons and uh, uh, the, 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 the idea of year. We measure years in summers, we measure years in springs. 
It's like in Russian you say how many summers are you. Uh, in English, year is the connective year, which is uh, spring in German and Russian. In, I don't know, in China you count, you say uh, how many springs are you, how many years. So uh, uh, now this uh, day, the cycle of day turns into a cycle of year. We use these positive images, but I, I like you say it's interesting because we say late than early, summers than springs. It's like if you if you suppose that we don't traverse the order because it's a circle, it's a cycle, it, it doesn't really matter where you start. Or then, uh, if you start spring, then summer, it's close, it's uh, next to each other. If you say summer then spring, you need to come the full circle to come to spring here. And you fly over the dark season. And maybe in a way, for summers, for springs, uh, if, if you have uh, skipping uh, the dark season, uh, maybe uh, you're only aware when you're on the, uh, let's say, light side. We call it light side because we can see it. Well, no other reason. It's like, um, again, if you connect it with life and death for a second, uh, then you're only alive when you're alive. You're only aware when you're alive. And in the living state, you have no idea what happens when you're dead. Maybe when you're dead, you have no idea what happens when you're alive. Because it's uh, on the other uh, frame of reference, uh, other system. It could be for summers and for springs. I don't really think she means it here, but uh, we can just talk about that, obviously. Why not? Still, for summers and for springs. So now uh, that longing gets longer. Because one thing, if you just miss something for a day. Another if you if you miss it for years. Then again it makes it stronger. Yeah, one thing is to keep your attention on something for a day. Another is to keep it uh, for years. Summer and for spring. And again, uh, summer springs, happy time, summer time, spring time. But still you, you listen to it, you hear it. You can only hear it because it's, it's different. Maybe you can't hear it because it's different or maybe you can hear it because it's different. Depending on how you tune into it. Because two possible ways. That's one possible way. Yeah. So two possible ways. Uh, one is uh, sameness. It's sameness. You don't see white on white. So you need something black to see it on white. Or another. Ah, well done. Another option is the opposite. If you're on the white side, you can only get in more white. And then you block uh, the black. So here it seems to be uh, the first option. Something comes from the wintry side, the bleak side, the wind side, to the happy uh, side, the careless side, summertime, springtime, uh, which is why she can hear it, because she has this contrast. It calls me late and early, so it gets worse. First you just hear it. Ah, oh, yeah, nice. And now it starts to call. It wants you to come to it as it used to come to you. Come home, come home, come home. It sings. So uh, we have this singing in every stanza. It's a very singing poem, very beautiful. So now we say, come home, come home, come home. Repeat it three times. So three is a magical number. Something you say three times is true. You know? He doesn't know. He doesn't know. If you say something three times, it's true. Anyone? 
that's what Lewis Carroll says, so it must be true. It's like, um, if you want it more scientifically, then one time it's just a bit of information among other information. A uh, second time you pay attention to it because it repeats. The third time you fix it. Ah, now you remember it, now you see, now, it, now it's true. Well, anyway, uh, 3 is a magical number, for some reason. Is it magical? Okay. It calls me late and early. So first you keep your attention on it late and early. Now it keeps its attention on you late and early. So the connection is now built and now it starts dragging the narrator back to its field. Come home, come home, come home it seems. So where is uh, the narrator's home? Over there. Over there, in the field. The wind shakes the barley. So again, if we suppose, and maybe maybe you can read it some other way. Why not? Again, uh, like I say, that in itself is nothing. It is some strange science. But uh, uh, as soon as you connect to them, as soon as you allow yourself to go into it to feel it and first of all feel the responses that it brings in you uh, then uh, the meaning starts building up the story your story your meaning and poetry is very good because in in most cases it's quite ambiguous which allows you to see your own meaning it gives you hints so you don't wander off too far away from the uh, uh, meaning at the same time, oh, that's the beauty of poetry. It's very open in, in most cases. It can be quite dogmatic about uh, how you read it. But generally, generally. It calls me late and early. Come home, come home, come home. It sings the wind that shakes the barley. So uh, as we come here, we can feel that it's a uh, a very strong call. We can feel that the wind is a very strong force from the beginning. It's singing. Again, this music, a spell, a music, a call, a wish, uh, a longing again. It's mutual longing. Uh, we have uh, built the distance from the start and uh, as soon as you build the distance you want to collapse it and then it speaks of home come home, uh, that's what we want inside, uh, that's what we seek for a home uh, same as in that Pink Floyd song as he says home, home again it, it brings us uh, nice feelings because home is what we look for I like to be here when I can. Yeah? And here, it's like, uh, do we have any doubts or whether she's going to answer the call? Is she going to ignore it? Or is she going to answer she's it? She's not going to ignore it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. she would have forgotten to read all to write all that poetry mm -hmm. <coughs> she's going to respond to it when mm -hmm. the time comes yeah because still for summers and for springs <coughs> she's not uh, living all behind and rushing there but she feels uh, that uh, the signal the call is growing stronger coming closer and growing in force growing in power yeah. Uh, how does she feel about it? Do we know? How do you feel about it? She is not afraid of it. Mm -hmm. uh, she sort of welcomes it. Mm -hmm. 
not as a change for the better, mm -hmm. uh, because there's enough beauty for her in the world here. Mm -hmm. uh, but she welcomes it as something the changes, the change that the wind brings, as something that uh, introduces her to the other world. Like you say, uh, the wind changes the weather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so there's no rush. On the other hand, uh, there are no sad feelings when mm -hmm. the time comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe uh, as we uh, have that meaning in our mind and we come back to like a second stanza, then maybe it's not about our world at all. Maybe uh, that uh, sky hangs soft and pearly and emerald world is listening is the next world, which is beautiful. It's not formed yet because she's not there yet to form it. So, so far it's a bit uh, ambiguous. I, uh, not, a, not even a glimpse, but it hasn't taken form yet. The sky is pearly, uh, the uh, world is just emerald, again a bit static, beautiful but uh, waiting for her to take a more specific shape. Maybe, because it's above the uplands, uh, waiting for her. And uh, if, if that is so, then that emerald world, the uh, next world, is listening to the wind also. So the wind which blows between realities, uh, that field uh, that uh, embraces realities, uh, sings not only to uh, this world but to that world as, w as well. Uh, this, it's the song, the word, the song, uh, the sound, the spell, the breath that actually brings reality world into being and not just that uh, consciousness of the other world isn't formed because there's no consciousness in it the narrator is the consciousness as long as she stays, uh, stays in this world this world is shaped as she moves to the other world what happens to that one? We don't know. Uh, the other world starts taking shape. Because then she has her consciousness producing it, uh, making it, making it form, making it manifest itself. Because it's like giving that pattern. It can be anything. But uh, so far it's no thing with the potential of being a thing waiting for her again awareness to guide it yeah. which is all again connected with wind which is breath which is spirit and is it uh, separate from her or is it her spirit moving freely there's music in my heart all day I hear it late and early so it, it comes from her heart, really. There's music in my heart all day. I hear it late and early. It comes from fields far away. Um, again, maybe uh, as those fields are far away, uh, they don't really follow our logic, our rules, and uh, they don't have to follow our grammar. So fields, uh, from fields far away, the wind that shakes the barley. Above the uplands drench the dew, the sky hangs soft and pearly, an emerald world is listening to the wind that shakes the barley. Above the bluest mountain crest, the lark is singing rarely, it rocks the singer into rest, the wind that shakes the barley. So each time we come to the last line, it sounds a bit different, again it grows in force. So the first stanza, the wind that shakes the barley is just connected with music in my heart. We can take it literally. Oh well, uh, I, I, I can feel the wind in the field, it makes me happy because I can feel this freedom uh, associated with the wind in the field. I'll just stop. The wind that shakes the barley. A second, 
it grows stronger because the whole world is listening to that wind. So it's not just some random wind, uh, now I'm looking at something else. We keep looking at it, we establish its force, its importance. Then we have third stanza, where the wind is shown to have power over uh, life and death, basically. Uh, the rocks are sinking to rest, the wind that shakes the barley. And uh, the last stanza, uh, come home, it sings. It calls me late and early, come home, it sings. Uh, this power is revealed, is shown. The wind that shakes the barley. There's music in my heart all day, I hear it late and early. It comes from fields far away, the wind that shakes the barley. Above the upland drenched with dew, the sky hangs soft and pearly, and emerald waters listening to the wind that shakes the barley. Above the bluest mountain crest, the lark is singing rarely, it rocks the singer into rest, the wind that shakes the barley. Oh, still for summers and for springs, it calls me late and early. Come home, come home, come home, it sings the wind that shakes the barley. Yeah. And oh, the poem itself is a song. Uh, maybe it is the very song that the wind is singing. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, anything else here? No? Okay, and yeah. yeah. let's finish.